In this video we're going to take a quick look at the Zalman ZM VE300. I saw this product and just had to buy it, it looked really really cool. So what this is, is an external hard drive case as it says, with virtual drive. What this means is you can load um, ISO images onto the hard drive and then this will emulate a CD-ROM drive into the computer. So you can boot the computer off of ISO images stored on this machine, which is really really cool. So you can see this is a USB 3 model. Um, I also saw a USB 2 model, but it was out of stock, so I'm, I think it's probably been discontinued, but, there, but you might want to be aware of that if you are buying it, that, this, that there is a USB 3 model and a USB 2 one floating around. So I purchased this from a company called LinITX, their web address is at the bottom of the screen. They sell a lot of really cool things, a lot of bespoke small form factor computer stuff, lots of networking stuff, and things like this. I've seen them quite a few times, but this is the first time I thought, right, I'm going to buy one of them. So. Just to quickly take a look at what you get in the box and then we'll do a demonstration of it. So, up. so on the top you can see here's the drive itself. And underneath what you get? Okay, you get a small CD with a backup utility on it. So that's probably for the One Touch Backup software. I probably won't be bothered using that, but if you want to use the One Touch Backup you'll probably need to install that. You get a USB 3 cable, which looks really good. That's quite a nice touch, you get a screwdriver and all the little screws included. Okay, that is actually really cool. You get a proper case as well to keep it in. In fact, I bought a Western Digital hard drive that cost a lot more than this enclosure, and it didn't come with that. And this really fairly cheap enclosure included that, so that's quite good. And now a quick start instruction guide as well, so you might need that. Shut that out of the way. Um, shut that out of the way. Okay, so now we'll take a look at the unit itself. So here it is. It's in a little bag, so we'll take it out. And that feels really, really nice to touch. And there's a film on the screen, so it looks a bit scratched. So we'll try and peel that off. Get it? <laughs> you really want to protect the screen. Mm -hmm. I don't have to get this off. So you're probably more likely to actually scratch your screen trying to get that film off. Um, so you can see there's a little screen here. This will be used for selecting modes, selecting ISO images, etc. A little jog wheel on one side, which lets you select the modes. Button on top for backup. USB ports, and that's about it. So what you now want to do if you want to take this apart, as far as I can tell, you just do, yep, you just pull it, and this top pulls off. Um, and you see there's a big space in there where your hard drive will go. So here I have. Uh, hard drive. This is a SATA hard drive, 250 gig. It's a fairly old drive, but it'll work fine. So what you need to do is simply take the bit that pulls off and slot it on top of the drive, like that, and then take the whole sort of assembly here and just slide it down into the enclosure, like that. That's fairly simple. Okay, and then we need to install the screws. So on the side here, there's a little gap, and you can just lever that up to lever up the sort of trim. And under there, you can see there's the screw hole. It's a bit hard to see, but I can see there's a screw hole under there. There's another one on the other side, and you'll just use the supplied screws and screw them in. So I'll go and do that way just now. Okay, so now I've taken the taken the Zalman, installed the drive, um, and copied a few ISO images onto it. What you need to do is you need to copy the ISO images into a directory on it called underscore ISO, and your drive has to be formatted as NTFS. Which is good because if it had to be formatted as FAT32, which lots of drives do, you'd, ha you'd be limited on file size. However, Zalman say they also offer f um, firmware, so you can install the different firmware that allow you to use FAT32 or XFAT if you want. But I've just stuck with NTFS because that's what they say it supports natively. So I've got it in the case there, it's a nice looking little case. Feels quite good and it's good and padded if you dropped it, but I'll just take the unit out of it. Although the way the case is designed, you can use it in the case. So here I'm going to connect the USB 3 cable into the top of the drive. That way around. It's easier to do not looking through a camera viewfinder. There we go. And then we're going to take the other end and plug it into my laptop which is sitting here. There we go. Now this laptop is not USB 3, but my desktop that I copied the files on with is, and it was really, really fast to copy the files. 
I copied like three Linux ISOs and it was a matter of seconds to copy them over. So that was really, really good performance. So what we're going to do now is we're going to power on the laptop and I'm going to press F12 to go into the boot selection menu on it. This will obviously vary depending on what machine you're using. But you'll see there that the unit's booting up. It's a laptop just beeping. And yep, yeah, that's it. So you can see there now on the screen it's quite hard to see. Um get the light off and see if it makes it easier. Okay. You see the screen is not the easiest thing in the world to see um on the camera. It's, it's perfectly clear in real real life, it's just not great on the camera. Uh, come on adjust, there we go. So you can see now you can almost see it. it's now displaying the image that I'm wanting to boot. So you see it says Ubuntu there. I can go down and pick a different Ubuntu one, so that was thirty two bit, that's now sixty four bit. And finally there's Windows XP Professional. So we're going to try and boot an Ubuntu one, and then we'll try and boot Windows XP and see how it works. Because that would be pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up and I'm going to pick just one of the Ubuntu ones first of all. So there's Ubuntu 64 bit. I'm going to press the jog dial inwards to select that drive. That should have selected. Yep, it doesn't really give much feedback. Um, Actually, there you go, yeah, a little disc appears at the top. It's very, very hard to see the screen on the camera, but it's a really good and clear in real real life. So now I lay the drive down, and if you look over at the laptop, which I've booted up into this boot selection menu, it's not the clearest thing to see, but as you can see, it's showing up here as a Zalman Virtual CD-ROM. So you simply pick that as a boot device, hit enter, and there we go. The Zalman is now flashing away, and that's the laptop booting up off of the Zalman drive, but it's treating it as though it's a USB... CD-ROM drive and not as a USB bootable Ubuntu disk. So you may wonder what the benefit of using this over just creating Ubuntu flash drive and booting them off that. Well the difference with this is you can put multiple images on it and boot lots of different images off the one drive so you don't need to constantly carry around lots of different flash drives or constantly rewrite them. I, I tried in the past creating a multi-boot flash drive which worked well to an extent but certain images wouldn't boot properly off it and sometimes Windows flash drives can be a pain especially Whereas this thing on the other hand is really really good and can boot, you know, anything you can think of off it. There you go, and you can see it's now booted up off of the flash drive um, into Ubuntu. So it's just you can install it from here, try it, just like with not a live CD. But it should be a bit faster than a live CD because live CDs are, you know, CDs are notoriously slow. So that's another benefit; it'll be faster than using individual CDs, and a lot more practical. Plus, this laptop here doesn't have a DVD drive, so it's the only way I can really install stuff is over USB, and it's a lot more practical than a single flash drive. There you go. So now booted into Ubuntu. So I'm just going to reboot it. I'll just do a hard shutdown. Can't be bothered playing with it. So that's the machine turned off. So I'm going to do it again and try a Windows installer. So again, I'm going to boot the laptop into its boot selection menu. Is that beeping? There you go. So you see now there's arm in here. It's still being impossible to see on the camera. Um, but it's, you might be able to just make it out. I'll try and adjust the video to make it better. Um, but we're now going to go down and pick a different ISO, in this case XP Professional. So we're going to press it in and select it. See the little discs popped up at the top? That represents the discs connected. That screen's a lot easier to see now. So what we're now going to do is again select the Zalman Virtual CD-ROM. And what I should now do is, there you go, hit any key. That's now booting into Windows Setup. I don't know how far this will go on this machine, just because this machine's a lot newer than XP. Um, I only had an XP disk ISO lying around. However, it should also be able to boot, you know, Windows XP, Windows 7 installer, Windows Va Windows 8 installer, Vista, whatever. Basically, in my mind, from in my sort of thoughts on this, you should theoretically be able to boot anything that's bootable off a CD through this, which is really cool. But there, you can see I'm also not going to go through the installation process and muck up my laptop. But you can see it's able to boot up into a Windows installer, and the camera's going completely out of focus. Oh, I love this camera. Um, but yeah, it's booting a Windows installer. And the camera decided it doesn't like focus because, oh, there we go. So there's a Windows XP installer. So that's really cool. Um, so just that was a very quick overview of the Zalman ZE V300. Did I get that correct?
VE3, yeah, the Zalman ZM VE300 is what that's called. It's available from many places, however I bought mine from Lin ITX, who are really, really good. Next day delivery, no problem. So I was very impressed with that. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. You can also visit my website at CameronGray.me or follow me on Twitter at CameronGray1515. Thanks for watching.